Welcome to the distance learning program presented by Innobus on Spring. Let us give a brief history on Spring, how Spring came into existence. So to start with the Java history, Sun Microsystems published Java beans which were used for a general purpose means of defining. They were reusable application components. They seemed too simple to perform any real work. But enterprise developers wanted more like transaction, support, security, distributing, computing and many more which were not possible using Java beans. Then in March 1998, Sun published the Enterprise Java Beans, which we call as EJB specification. But these EJBs were too complicated in a very different way. Like they were mandating deployment descriptors, plumbing code. It means implementing all the interfaces like remote, local, home, which were very complex to deal with for any kind of enterprise applications. During this time, Spring Framework was founded in Feb 2003 for developing enterprise applications easier using simple POJOs, which are nothing but plain old Java objects with programming techniques including aspect oriented programming, inversion of control, and you'll know more about these things when we go in future slides. The formal, so this is the formal history or the official history given for spring releases. So these are the latest releases where we can get the latest spring framework 4.0 that is coming up in 2013. Let's give introduction to spring which is nothing but Java application framework. Spring is the open source framework created by Rod Johnson. Spring is the most popular application development framework for enterprise Java. Millions of developers use Spring to create high performing, easily testable, reusable code without any locking. The formal definition or a generic way of saying Spring is a lightweight, inversion of control, aspect oriented and container framework. So each term will mean defining its own aspect. So let's see what does lightweight mean. So lightweight is all about because the jars required to develop spring application can be picked based on requirement and minimally invasive. It means springs will not mandate your Java class to extend any API class or implement any API interface. And therefore, by using simple POJOs for enterprise development, they, that's the reason it is called lightweight. It's light and minimum in size. Inversion of control. It means it promotes loose coupling. Aspect oriented enables cohesive development by separating application business logic from system services. Container because it contains and manages life cycle and configuration of application objects. Framework possible to configure and compose complex applications from simpler components. So altogether Spring is a lightweight inversion of control and aspect oriented container framework. So why to use Spring? Because of modularity. It means plain old Java objects keep your code concise, simple and modular. Productivity. Over 70% of developers report Productivity gains and reduction in time to deploy the spring, therefore building I in productivity. Portability. Applications run on Tomcat or any of the JWE servers as well as cloud platform. Testability. 
cleanly express dependency make unit and integration testing easier just because of POJOS. These are the main key benefits because of which developers or any programmer will choose for enterprise development. Let's see some of the features of Spring. These are the features. Modern web. It means complete support for modern applications including REST, HTML5, Conversation and AJAX. Data access supports traditional RDBMS as well as new NoSQL solutions which will map reduce frameworks and cloud-based data services. Integration, enterprise orchestration and adapters for distributed applications, asynchronous message-based applications and batch applications. Mobile, web support for mobile client platforms including Android and iPhone. It is social feature because integration with Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Triplet and other prominent social networks. Security, authorization control for all tires and authentication integration to dozens of providers. Cloud ready, Spring applications are supported on all popular cloud platforms like Cloud Foundry, Google App Engine and Amazon EC2. So these are all the key features of Spring. So let's see the architecture of Spring Framework. This is the architecture of Spring Framework as you can see. It is a layered architecture. So Spring architecture basically gives 20 different JAR files. So based on the requirement of your enterprise application, you can select respective JAR files which fall into different categories as shown in this diagram. So to begin with, we have core container and which consists of beans and core. The core container is the main aspect and base of Spring. It consists of different core, beans, context and expression language modules. So the core and bean module are the most important and fundamental part of framework. It defines how beans are created, configured and managed. The bean factory applies the inversion of control pattern to separate an application configuration and dependency specification from actual application code. Next, we have context. So, context within the core container module is used to build on a solid base provided by the core and bean modules. The core modules bean factory will make you spring a container. But the context modules makes it a framework. So the context module adds support for internationalization, event propagation, resource loading and many more. We even have expression language within the core container. The expression language module provides a powerful expression for querying and manipulating an object graph at runtime. Further, we have the data access integration layer. So here, in data access integration layer, we have different modules altogether. For example, it consists of JDBC, ORM, OXM, JMS and transaction. So JDBC module provides a JDBC abstraction layer that removes the need to do tedious JDBC coding and parsing of database vendor specific error codes. So this is very important feature provided by Spring. It will avoid all the boilerplate codes. If you remember for JDBC connection in any Java application, you need to have boilerplate code which says 
loading your driver, getting the connection, preparing the statement and then executing it. So all these statements will be taken care by the Spring container itself. So therefore that is the major advantage. Next we have an ORM module which is nothing but object relational mapping module. It provides integration layer for popular object relation mapping APIs including Java Persistent API, JDO that is Java Data Objects, Ibernate, Ibatis and many more. Using ORM package you can use all these OR mapping frameworks in combination with all the other features of Spring offers. We even do have OXL which is Object XML Mapping implementing for JAXB, Capture, XML Beans, Xtreme and many more. Java Messaging Service module contain features for providing and consuming messages. We even have transactions. The transaction module supports programmatic and declarative transaction management for classes that implement special interface and for all your POJOs. So next, going to another layer, we have web layer. So here there is web, servlet, portlet and structs. The web layer which has got web modules provide basic web oriented integration features such as multi-part life functionality for file upload, internationalization, initialization, IOC container using servlet listener, a web oriented application context and therefore the web servlet. The next module which contains Spring Model View Controller that is MVC implementation for web applications. Spring's MVC framework provide a clean separation between domain model code and web forms and integrates with all other features of Spring framework. That is also a web structs module which contains support classes for integration a classic structs web tire within a Spring application. This support is however deprecated in 3.0 but migrating with struct 2.0 is still available as a spring MVC solution. And then there is also a web portlet which provides the MVC implementation to be used in a portlet environment and mirrors the functionality of web servlet module. After which we have Aspect oriented programming which is AOP layer within the Spring framework. So this will provide aspect oriented pro programming which will allow you to define method interceptors and point cards to cleanly decouple code that implements functionality that should be separated. Also there is a separate aspects which we do aspect oriented programming. So here the aspect is achieved using aspect J and then we have instrumentation. So this instrumentation will provide class instrumentation support and therefore class loader impl implementations to be used in certain application servers. Finally the last layer is the text test layer which is mainly used for testing purpose. This module supports testing for spring components using JUnit, TestNG and many more. It also provides consistent loading of spring and that finally the application context and caching of those contexts will provide mock object facility for testing your code in isolated mode. So these are the architecture of Spring framework. Let's see the environment setup to do your basic Spring development. This is the Java installation which is the first step required. You need to have Java which should be 1.5 onwards. 
it is always better to take latest version. We do have JDK 1.8 and 1.7 which is currently used. Installing Tomcat. And next step is to do the setup for Eclipse or any IDE that is Integrated Development Environment. And finally, set up Spring Framework Libraries, which are very much required for any Spring development. You need to download all the required libraries from the site that is springsource.org, which will give you the latest Spring jars. So for project setup, after your environment setup, let's see the steps involved. Create Java project. Add required libraries. Create source files. Create bean configuration file. Running the program. So these are the five simple steps for developing your Spring application. So let's see. A small demo on writing a simple bean. Let's do the project setup for Spring. First step is create a Java project. Give the project as Spring Bean Project. So once you have given the name for the project, finish. Next step, you need to add the Spring libraries which will be downloaded from source that is springsource.org you have to get the latest spring jars and then unzip it and then locate it in any of the folder in your drive finally add it to the java build path by clicking external jars select all the jars click ok and you're done adding the spring jars so this is a set of jar files you need to always take the latest jars once you are done adding the Spring libraries, next step is, let's create a simple POJO. Go to source folder, new, package you can create, within which you can place your Spring, and then create a new class, give the class name as, Spring B, which will be a simple POJO. Once you are done with this, this is the template what you get. Within this, you can add some code. Let's add string message. And for this, let's create getter and setter. Right click, generate getter and setter for this. And once you are done with this, this is a simple pojo having a property name message with respective methods. Once you're done with this, next step is create a main class from where you can get your bean accessed. Create a Java class. You can call it as main Java. Select public static void main because we need main to get executed. Finish. And this is the file which you get done. It will get generated. And within this, Let's add some code. Here, you need to create an instance of class path XML application context. So, within this, this class will be implementing application context. Will see all these concepts in our coming course. The application context is present in your org.spring framework.context. So, you will get a context in the instance using this class. So, within this class, we need to pass a string which will be the XML file name. So, here, the file name, let's give a file name as 
simple dean.xml and this is the xml which will give the details on your spring bean so this xml will contain the configuration metadata which will be used by spring container to locate your bean and inject your bean when you want to get it during runtime so let's give this name this name can be anything you can give any name but since we need to get the bean definition of the simple bean class what we have created now so let's relate with that name and after that this context can be used with a method called get bean so this get bean takes a parameter string parameter which will be the bean id so this bean id can be anything so you can give name appropriately when you do this you will give you will get the instance of the bean so we will see it will be a simple bean instance it will be a simple string it was the class it was a spring bean yeah So you will get this instance. You need to typecast that bean. So once you are done with the bean instance, you can call the method which we have set message. You can set the message. Hello from Spring Bean. And also. Get the message what you have set. So let's try to print on our console to see the output. So this is the line of code which is required to get your bean instance. Now, if you see in this Snippet, you can nowhere see the creation of this bean that is spring bean what we have created just now. So this is the bean class which is having nothing but a property message. We are trying to get the instance of that spring bean using class path XML application context class which implements this application interface. We will see more in detail on these concepts in further course. This class takes a parameter that is string parameter which will be an xml locating an xml where the bean will be defined so here you can get the bean instance using the context object by passing the bean id name once you get that id you will get the bean instance and then using that bean instance you can invoke the methods so let's define the simple bean dot xml the name can be anything you can even give the name of the class spring bean but here let's keep it as simple bean but create the xml simple bean inside your source folder create a file the name should be the same name what we have given so name was Simple bean dot xml. So within this simple bean dot xml, you need to paste the template which will be everywhere the same. So this is the template we can just copy paste to define your bean, which will be the Spring framework location and the schema it will be having all these details so what you can do you can just place this template as it is so this will give you the beans tag within which you can create the definition for your bean
So this is the bean tag within which you have something called ID attribute. Inside this, remember you need to pass the same attribute name which you had used to get the bean instance. In this case, it will be bean ID. So copy that and paste it. It should be the same. And also the location of your class. So location will be com dot inubus dot spring bean is the class. And this is the definition for your bean that is spring bean with an id bean id. The name can be anything. You can give any name for this id but remember you need to match this id with your get bean method. And once you are done with the definition in simplebean.xml, you are done with defining your bean. Your spring bean is defined within this XML configuration. So therefore, this we are doing the same thing here. Using this class and using this XML configuration file, we are trying to get the context instance on which we get the instance of bean ID. This is the name ID which we are passing to get the instance of the spring bean. You need to typecast it what you get and after which you can get the bean instance. So this is the concept of injecting the bean on runtime. This is the simple bean. Let's execute it. And once you execute this, select main Java, run as Java application. And here if you see in the console, it is showing you hello from spring bean. If you see this, it means the bean instance has been created on fly on runtime using this information what we are passing. That is the spring simple bean.xml which is defining your bean location and also using this get bean method where we pass the id to get the instance and then we are using that bean for methods to invoke. So this is the simple bean of a spring which works without using any new operator. So we just need to do some line of code here when we define within the XML and also we are getting that with get bean method. And this is the simple bean. We'll see the concepts of class path, XML application context and what is this application context in R for this slide. So this is the demo on Simple Spring Bean. Spring IOC container. The Spring container is at the core of the Spring framework. As we have seen the architecture, the Spring container is at the core level. So here, the Spring container contains the core Spring framework. The container will create the objects write them together, configure them and manage their complete life cycle from creation till destruction. The spring container uses dependency injection to manage the components that make up an application. Therefore, IOC, it is very important to handle all kinds of creation, wiring of the objects, configuring them and managing their life cycle. So in this figure, if you see, the container gets its instructions on what objects to instantiate, configure and assemble by reading configuration metadata provided. The configuration metadata can be represented either by XML or it can be by Java annotations or a Java code. So this diagram is a high level view of how Spring works. The Spring IOC container makes use of Java POJO classes and configuration metadata to produce a fully configured and executable system or an application. Spring provides two distinct types of containers. Spring Bean Factory Container. This container is the simplest container providing basic support for dependency injection and it is defined inside spring framework.beans.factory.beanfactory interface. The bean factory and related interfaces such as bean factory aware, initializing bean, 
disposable beam are still present in spring for the purposes of backward compatibility with large number of third party frameworks that integrate with spring so the most commonly used beam factory implementation is the xml beam factory class this container reads the configuration metadata from the xml file and uses it to create a fully configured system or application this beam factory is usually preferred where the resources are limited very limited resources like mobile devices or applet based applications so in those cases beam factory container is used there is an another type called spring application context container this container adds more enterprise specific functionality such as the ability to resolve textual messages from properties files and the ability to publish application events to interested event listeners this container is defined in spring framework dot context dot application context interface the application context container includes all functionality of the beam factory container as well so it generally recommended over beam factory so you can therefore prefer using application context container it mostly commonly used application context implementations are file system xml application context the container loads the definitions of the beam from an xml file so here you need to provide the full path of xml beam configuration file to the constructor next is class path xml application context this container loads the definitions of the beams from an xml file so here you do not need to provide the full path of xml file but you need to set class path properly because this container will look beam configuration xml file in class path finally there is web web xml application context this container loads the xml file with definition of all beam from within a web application so these are very important because spring container as said or seen earlier it's very useful for creating managing destroying the application objects and these are two basic and distinct types of containers provided by spring spring beam definition a beam is an object that is instantiated assembled and otherwise managed by a spring ioc container these beams are created with the configuration metadata that you supply to the container for example the configuration metadata can be in the form of xml definitions the beam definition contains the information called configuration metadata which is needed for the container to know the following details how to create a beam beam's life cycle details and beam's dependencies Uh, so far we have seen how the container needs this configuration metadata so let's see spring configuration metadata here the configuration metadata translates into a set of the following properties that make up each beam definition so we have class which is an attribute within the beam tag element in xml file which makes mandatory and specify the beam class to be used to create the beam name the attribute specify the beam identifier uniquely so therefore in xml based configuration metadata you use id or name attribute to specify beam identifiers these are all the attributes given for a beam element tag within the xml configuration file so you have scope this attribute specifies the scope of the objects created from a particular beam definition and it will be discussed in further course of our spring training there is also a constructor r this is used to inject dependency and will be discussed again further in future slides properties this is used to inject the dependency 
ऑटो वायरिंग मोड दिस इज यूज टू इंजेक्ट द डिपेंडेंसी अगेन लेजी इनिशियलाइजेशन मोड दिस टेल्स दैट आईओसी कंटेनर टू क्रिएट अ बीन इंस्टेंट व्हेन इट इज फर्स्ट रिक्वेस्टेड रादर देन एट स्टार्टअप so this is very important feature of ioc container providing injecting of beans feature initialization method a call back to be called just after all necessary properties on the bean have to be set by the container destruction method a call back to be used when the container containing the bean is destroyed so all these properties are set as said earlier within the bean element tag and also some of the properties can be set using annotations we'll see all these concept further but remember to know these definitions and the attribute uh, specifications to define in your configuration metadata files The Spring IOC container is totally decoupled from the format in which configuration metadata is actually written. So there are following three important methods to provide configuration metadata to the Spring container. We have XML based configuration file, annotation based configuration, and finally Java based configuration. next we even define the scope for bean so let's see spring bean scopes these are the scopes of spring beans which need to be defined and each will signify its information stating single stun this will scope the bean definition to a single instance so if you want single instance every time when you invoke a bean then the container will use the scope as singleton prototype this scope is a single bean definition to app any number of object instances suppose you want every time new instances to be created for every invocation of the bean you need to use scope as prototype request this scopes a bean definition to a http request only valid in context of a web aware spring application context so session the scopes a bean definition to http session only valid in the context of a web aware spring application context again global session the scopes a bean definition to a global http session again it is a valid only in context of a web aware spring application context so these are all used in web application development request session global session and important to speak about spring de spread development with pojos singleton and prototype let's see the demonstration on spring bean scopes we'll see how singleton and prototype will work we have already seen the concept on it those are the attributes within the bean element which will be used by the spring ioc container so let's use the same project which we had created earlier so in this there is an xml which is defining the bean so here if you see in inside the bean element we will have a scope attribute within which we can give all these scope we have seen all these prototype request session and singleton so let's see singleton first so you have just given a scope for your bean as single turn so what will spring container do it will create only one instance for the number of invocation it will give the same instance no matter how many times you invoke on that object so we have given the scope let's see how it works so here we are getting the message in order to test the single turn you need to get the bean instance again and again try to print that so here what should happen though you are invoking the bean getting the instance of the bean here you are getting the instance of the bean twice and invoking the method here the bean instance has been invoking get message using this bean let's give us 
if to be more specific we have used the same bean because every time you call passing the bean id the same bean id will give you the same instance so therefore it should print the same message that is the concept of single ton scope so let's run this run as java application so if you see this it has printed the same message twice the reason being every time when the single ton scope is used the spring container will always send you the same instance by seeing the scope as single ton so this is the example of single ton let's see how the prototype will work so we'll go to same simple bean dot xml change the single ton to prototype so once you are done with this let's the code in this main java remain the same we are just doing nothing once you are invoke uh, creating an instance with the bean id id what we have passed and then getting the message second time also we are trying to get the bean instance by passing the bean id and also trying to get the message out of that instance so in this case what should happen if it is a prototype it will create a new instance every time when you request for a bean using get bean so this bean id should give you the new instance so let's see how it works run this as java application again so let's clear this console and now again run this so if you run this you can see here first time it has given you hello from spring bean but next time it is null did you see the reason being in main java first time when we get the instance of bean we are setting the message hello from java and then printing it second time when we are getting the instance we are not setting anything because this time it's a new instance so it is required to set the message on it to get the message since the new instance has not got any message it is printing you null so this is the concept of prototype so we have seen two of the scopes which are used in spring beans and other scopes like request session global session those are used in web applications when we do using spring bean so this is the demo on singleton and prototype this is the life cycle of simple bean or beans in spring so let's see the life cycle beginning where it will instantiate first the spring spring bean will be instantiated using this life cycle and then it will populate the properties spring inject the bean properties and then there is a set bean name spring set bean name if the bean implements bean name aware spring passes the bean id to set bean name set bean factory if bean implements bean factory aware spring passes the bean factory to set bean factory then also there is a set application context for web development and also there is a pre initialization it is also called as a post process of a bean if there is any bean post process then we have to use bean post processors spring calls post processor before initialization method and there is initialize beans if the bean implements initializing bean its after property set method is called if the bean has init method declaration the specified initialization method is called so finally there is a custom call for init method which can be defined within the bean by giving an init method for providing your own custom definition and also there is a post initialization if there is a bean post processors it implements spring calls that post process after initialization method and finally bean will be ready to use and once it is done the bean is used there will be a disposable bean implementing the interface which will call destroy method and if there is no interface implemented you can also have a custom method called destroy method within your bean class and this is the complete life cycle of beans in spring factory container
spring dependency injection which will also be called as inversion of con control so let's see the spring de dependency injection dependency injection or sometimes called wiring helps in gluing these classes together and same time keeping them independent so this is very important dependency injection it means it will just club or glue the classes together making them independent at the same time and this is the most important feature used by spring and accessed by many other frameworks dependency uh, dependency injections there are two types or three types we basically call as constructor based dependency injections setter based dependency injections and the beans are declared using bean element and using this constructor r or property elements within the xml configuration files it can also be done through annotations and finally auto wiring so these are the different types of dependency injections constructor based dependency injection let's see a small demo on constructor based dependency injection Let's see the demonstration on constructor based dependency injection. So for that let's use the same project which we had created earlier within the source folder create a new class naming constructor b. So once you are done with it finish so you get a class create a constructor for this now since we are seeing the constructor based dependency injection let's try to inject a bean which we have created that is first declare the bean spring bean then within this constructor let's initialize it so here if you see we are trying to get the dependency of spring bean class which is the class which we had created earlier has got property and methods in it and this bean has been trying to depend within this constructor bean class so here there is a constructor where it is taking green instance and trying to initialize so let's see how this constructor based dependency injection work by getting the instance within this constructor so after getting the instance let's create some message or method which will print the message within this class using spring bean instance so you have set message so within which you'll set message from constructor bean and then try to get that dot get message what you have set and print within sys out so that we can see the output so here we can come to know that instance of spring bean will be injected within this constructor bean using constructor dependency injection but for this you also need to make change in your xml file so let's go to that same xml where we have defined the bean of spring bean this is the definition of spring bean you also need to define bean for 
constructor b id you can give us constructor b id and then class which is there within com dot dot So once you have this location done, the next thing within this theme definition, there is an another element called constructor R. This is the element which is required for you to instantiate the dependency injection bean through this element. So here if you see, it has got an attribute called ref which takes the ID which you want to inject. So here in this case, bean ID is the ID which you are trying to inject within this constructor present in your constructor bean class. So this is the element which is used to inject your bean of string bean class within the constructor available in this constructor bean class. So this is the XML which has been defined which is nothing but the configuration metadata for spring IOC container to inject the bean within another bean through constructor dependence injection. So you have already done that. Now within this here if you here you need to pass the ID for oops, so here you need to pass the ID for constructor ID. So let's copy that. This ID should match with your get bean method. So here we are trying to get the instance of this along with the constructor reference bean. So once you are getting this, you need to typecast with the constructor bean class. So once you are done with this, you will get the instance of constructor bean as well as of using because of using this constructor arg element this bean id will also be injected to constructor dependency so now what we'll do we'll try to access the message present in constructor b so this will just do what it will just access the bean instance of spring bean and then use the methods invoke the method and we are just printing the message to check if the instance of bean is created, invoking the method of the spring bean and printing in the console. So let's see the output. Select main Java, run as Java application. So once you see, you can see message from constructor bean. So it means the constructor bean has been created. So you have got the constructor bean. In turn, you have also got the spring bean instance within the constructor. So, did you see? This is the constructor dependency injection. So, within which the instance is made available and you can use the methods within that instance. So, this is all about constructor dependency injection. Setup based dependency injection. Let's see the demonstration on setup based dependency injection. Let's see the demonstration on setup based dependency injection. So let's do that with the existing project what we have created earlier. So create a new class which give it name as setup bean. We are seeing the setup bean dependency injection. So once you have done with this, finish this and you will get this class created. So here, try to 
declare the bean which you want to inject. So here what we'll do? Spring bean, we'll try we'll try to inject the spring bean. So we have just declared the bean instance. Now create the getter and setter for this. So here what you are doing is within a bean setter bean which is a new bean it is using a spring bean. So here we are seeing the example for setter bean injection. So there is the method for it. Setter method for this bean instance. So what should happen is the spring IOC container should inject the bean spring bean instant through this set method. So you need to get the instance of this bean using this setter method. So once you get the instance you can just try to again write a method to print the message by accessing spring bean instance once it is created. So here you can set message tell message from setter bean. So once it is done you can again use sysout where within which you will invoke get bean method. That is get message method which will get you the message what you have set. So here there is a bean class which has been using another bean and the container here it uses setter method to inject the bean. So after this you need to make the changes in XML file. So, so there is an XML file called simple bean dot XML. So within which you have a definition for spring bean which you are trying to inject using setter method and within which you also need to define a bean for your setter class that is id will be you can give anything so let's give setter bean id and then class will be the location of your class that will be com dot you know bus dot setter bean and once you are done with this within this bean definition there is a property called property element which takes name. This name should be the same name as you have defined within the class. This is the declaration of your bean and this is the property of this class set of bean class. So what you have to do? The property which you have been declared you have to copy the same variable name within this property name. It should be same. And once you are done with this, there is another attribute called reference within which you need to pass bean id reference. So why is this? Because you are trying to inject the spring bean within this setter bean class using setter method which is possible through this property element. So this is all about setter dependency injection. So this is referring the bean id using the id of string bean and this property name should be same as what you have declared within the setter bean. So this is all about changes to be done within the xml file. When you, once you are done, done with this go to this main java and here what we are expecting? We are expecting context dot get bean which takes the id of setter bean id and will return you what the setter bean class once it is done you can use the method of it for printing the message which in turn uses the instance of spring bean so this is all about. So you are getting an instance of setter bean within which you are using a method print message. So here what you are doing again to recall. So 
So within print message, you are using the instance of Spring Bean, which will get injected through said Spring Bean method by the use of property element declared in XML file within Bean element. So this is all about setup Bean dependence injection. Let's execute. Go to main Java class. Run as Java application. And here if you see in the console, message from setter bean. It means the bean has been successfully got injected inside this spring bean that is within the setter bean class. We have injected the spring bean instance using set spring bean method for this property using property element which we have given in the bean definition. So this is the complete bean definition which is having a property element and got name as property referring the bean id of spring bean. So this is how the setter dependency injection work. Auto wiring. Auto wiring modes are used to instruct bean that is spring container to use auto wiring for dependency injection. The auto wire attribute of the bean element to specify auto wire mode for a bean definition. There is an auto wire attribute used. So these are the auto wire modes which are the attribute which will be given to the auto wire attribute specifying with these modes within the bean element. So to begin with, there is an auto wire mode called no. It means this is the default setting which means no auto wiring and you should use explicit bean reference for wiring. So you have nothing to do special for this wiring. This is what you already have seen in dependency injection. So next, there is by name. Auto wiring by property name. Spring container looks at the properties of the bean on which auto wire attribute is set to by name in the XML configuration files. If then tries to match and wire its properties with the beans defined by the same names in the configuration file. So by name is used for the property names in your bean. By type. Auto wiring by property data type. So, spring container looks at the properties of the beans on which auto wire attribute is set to a by type in the XML configuration file. It then tries to match and wire a property if its type matches with exactly one of the beans name in the configuration file. If more than one such bean exists, a fatal exception will be thrown. So, it should be careful to check the by type mode. Next is the constructor. Similar to the by type, but type impl implements or implies to constructor arguments. So if there is not exactly one bean of the constructor argument type in the container, then a fatal error is raised. Auto detect. Spring first tries to wire using auto wire by constructor. If it does not work, Spring will then try to auto wire by the by type. So these are the auto wire modes given to the auto wire attribute within the bean element. But in this auto wiring, there are certain limitations like overriding possibility, specifying dependencies using constructor R and property settings will always override auto wiring. Primitive data types auto wire cannot be done on so called simple properties such as primitives, strings, and classes. Confusing nature auto wiring is less exact than explicit wiring. So these are the limitations using auto wiring. Now, le next, let's see the annotation based configuration. 
configure the dependency injection using annotation. So we have already seen using XML, we have seen auto wiring and this is the annotation which can be used for configuring the bean. Instead of using XML to describe a bean wiring, you can move the bean configuration into the component class itself by using the annotations on the relevant classes or method or even field declaration. Annotation injection is performed before XML injection. Once this context colon annotation iPhone config is configured, you can start annotating your code to indicate that Spring should automatically wire values into properties, methods or constructors. So, in order to annotation for work, you have to use this context colon annotation iPhone config in your configuration file. Without this, annotations used in your classes will not work. So there are certain number of annotations. Spring has number of custom annotations like required which says required annotation is used to specify that the value of the bean property is required to be dependency injected. So that means an error is cast if a value is not specified for that property. So required annotation will mandate to specify the value of bean property. And there is auto wired. So auto wiring would be configured for number of different approaches. Constructor settled by type, settled by name. So therefore auto wired you can eliminate the additional XML in your configuration by using auto wired annotation. Next is a resource. It declares a reference to a resource such as data resource, Java messaging service, and also many other resources. You can indicate that using this art resource annotation. So this is very equivalent for declaring resource reference in XML configuration files. There is an element called resource icon reference. So instead of using those elements of XML, you can directly use this art resource annotation. And post contract, that is post construct, sorry, the Spring framework will have this post construct which will specify a method that the container will invoke after resource injection is completed but before any of the components lifecycle methods are called. So it, as name says it is called or invoked before any component lifecycle methods will be called. So pre-destroy it specify a method that container will invoke before removing the component from the service. So these are all the lifecycle methods, post, construct, pre-destroy. So these are, will indicate and invoke before and after your methods. Finally, you have annotations to configure beans like component. So this annotation component is the basic stereotype. Classes annotated with this will become spring beans. At controller, classes annotated with this annotation will be considered as a controller in a spring MVC support. So this is very very important annotation used in spring MVC development. At repository, Classes with at repository annotation represent a repository. It can be a data access object and all the objects relating to your database relative stuff. At service, this annotation marks classes that implement a part of business logic of the application. So this is also very important. Whichever method specify the business application, you can annotate with at service. And there are also some other Transaction annotations like at transactional which tells it is an alternative to the XML based declarative approach to transaction configuration. All the methods of a spring bean instantiated from a class with the at transactional annotation will be transactional.
So the functionality offered by the transaction annotation and it supports classes available onwards of JDK 1.5. This transaction annotation is very much in act only after JDK 1.5. There is aspect annotation. This annotation on the class marks it is an aspect along with art point cut which we can see all the related annotation relating aspect annotation in our coming training. Let's see the demonstration on annotation based spring configuration. So we have already seen many annotations being used in spring. Here we'll see the demo on required and auto wired annotation. So before starting using annotations, you need to make, make some changes in XML configuration file to get your annotation working. So what was that? So we have used this project earlier. So we'll use the same project. There is an XML file called simple bean, which has got the definition of beans here, within which you need to place a line called context colon annotation iPhone hyphen config. So this is the line which makes your annotations work when you are using in your spring beans. Along with this, you also need to get the namespace for this context element to work. So this is again a template which need to be present within your XML configuration file. So this namespace of context should be coming from your the schema context. So within which after this you can give this element. So these two are must in your XML file. Once you are done using this, now you are ready to use annotation in your files. So there is a class called Spring Bean. Here let's use annotation called Require. So you are making this as required. It means that this property called message needs to be populated within your XML configuration file. That is the definition of required annotation where the spring container will look for the properties being populated within your XML file when you are trying to access the property. So if you are trying to access the property using get message, you will try to look in XML if you have populated this property. Now in this XML if you see there is no population as such. You have just plainly defined the beam ID with locating your beam. That's it. There is no other definition defined in your XML. So now in your main Java where you are trying to access the beam, here there is just a get beam trying to access and then you are directly using get message and we are not setting any message. So Without setting any message, you are trying to access the message property from Spring Bean, which has been made as art required annotation. So here what will happen if you have made the method as required, it will expect the property message being populated within your XML file. So we have not done anything as such before doing. Let's see what happens and execute this main java run as java application so here if you see it is throwing exception bean initialization exception saying property message is required for bean bean id it means it is expecting this property being populated within the xml for the definition having bean id bean so therefore when you use annotation with required it will throw the exception being initialization ex exception when you have not given any property definition within the XML file. So let's give that now. Let's go and give in simple bean.xml where you have a property message and you are populating within the bean definition using this. So what was the message? This was the property and you are populating the value. Here you are telling message from property element. So because you are setting the element within this property tag, 
within the beam definition. So here if you see, and this will solve your required annotation because it is marking the required annotation. It means it is expecting that property to be populated within the XML file which we have already given now. So now let's see and execute main Java, run a Java application. So here if you see, it has printed you the message telling message from property element. So this is how the required element work. Now let's see how auto wired will work. So for that take a class setup bean. So there is a class setup bean which is using a spring bean instance and it has been injected to through set uh, spring bean. We have already seen this in earlier demo. So now what we will do is we will put a required that is auto wired annotation. So what will this annotation do? It will auto wire automatically the spring bean instance through this setup method without using the property element being defined in your configuration file. So therefore let's see how it works. So once you have done this XML you need to make the changes. So what you have to do is you have to first define the bean. What was the bean? It was a setter bean. Give the ID for it and locate it. And then once you are done with, that's it. So here there is no need to give, you need to give, give the class name that is setter bean name. So this is the definition for your setup bean class and here if you see there is no need of any property to be done because even though you are using an instance in this class, if you see you are using an instance of spring bean and also trying to get it the instance through setter spring bean. But now you are using an annotation called auto wired. So what should it do? Automatically it should get your spring bean instance without any requirement of your property element. So let's run this. But before running this, you have to make changes in your main Java. So let's change that to setup bean. And here it should be setup bean. So once you are done with this, what is the bean has got to do with? It has got a method called print message. So within this what it is doing, it is accessing the spring bean instance and printing the message. So let's run this class main java. Run as java application. And here if you see it is telling message from setter bean. If, did you see this? Because it has used auto wired annotation and automatically it is injecting the bean of spring bean within the setter bean class using auto wired annotation and without the use of your property element. So that is the usage of your auto wired annotation. And this was the demo on annotations. Java based configurations. Java based configuration option enables you to write most of your spring configuration without XML with the help of few Java based annotations. So at configuration is used which indicates that the class can be used by the spring IOC container as a source of bean definitions. At b, a method annotated with at bean annotation will return an object that should be registered as a b in the spring application context. Import allows 
for loading Artbean definitions from another configuration class. At scope, the default scope is singleton, but you can override this with the at scope. So we have seen the scopes of Bean, Singleton and Prototype. So you can also annotate using this at scope within the class or a Bean using this annotation by giving your scope of a Bean. By default, it will be Singleton. Let's see the demonstration on Java based configuration. We have seen many annotations being used for the same at configuration, at bean, at scope, and many more. Let's see the demo on at configuration and at bean annotations. So let's create a Java project. First, first step give it as configuration, finish, then Add the Spring Libraries. So once you are done with it, within the Source folder, create a Java Pojo. Inside a package, call it as Hello Bean. Once you are done with it, you will get a Bean. Declare some property. Generate getter and setter. So this is a normal POJO class. It's a simple B having a property message. Now let's create one more class. Give it as config B. And finish. Here you can use a configuration annotation. So once you are using this, what will this say? We have already seen it means it will tell the Spring IOC container that this class will be the source for your bean definition. So there is no need of XML, no need of any kind of configuration files. You just need to have this class annotated with configuration. Once you are done with this, you can have a method written in Allobean on this method and then return this. So here, if you use Hello Bean is the class, yeah, at Bean. So what will this do? This will tell the container that this method should return you the instance of bean class. So here you need to pass an instance of hello bean. So therefore, using at bean annotation will tell the spring container that it has to return the instance for your hello bean. And once it is done, Let's create a main Java class which can invoke. So have main method in it within which you have to use application context is an interface which we have already seen in our course. There is a class called annotation config application context. So this, what will this do is, it will take the config class. So here what is the config class? Config bean was the class. When you give dot class, it will give, create an instance with it. And 
we have to give and once it is done next step is using context object there is a get bean method within which you need to pass hello not a string in, instead there is a class you see get bean has got a parameter of class so here hello bean is the class so once you are done with this you will get an instance of hello bean typecast it and then you can use the method to set the message hello using java based configuration and then print the same using get message so did you see this? There is no XML file, nothing. You just have one single class called config bean, which is having annotated with configuration, telling the container that this class will act as a source for your bean definitions. And once you have been to it in a method, it will give an instance of your hello bean. So let's run this. Here we need to use annotation config application context. This is very important. In order to use Java based configuration, you need to use annotation config application context, which takes the class instance that is dot class, and also here within the get bean you have to pass the dot class within which you'll get the bean instance. Let's run this. So did you see this? Hello using Java based configuration. So using the annotations that is at configuration and at bean, we have succeeded the Java based configuration without using any XML configuration file. Aspect oriented programming. This is also one of the important features of Spring Framework. Aspect-oriented programming entails breaking down program logic into distinct parts, so-called concerns. The functions that span multiple points of an application are called cross-cutting concerns. And these cross-cutting concerns are conceptually separate from the application's business logic. So, these concerns can be separated from your actual enterprise application business logic. For example, if you talk about logging, auditing, declarative and many more. So all these concerns are achieved using aspect oriented programming. So to add on, there are transactions, security and also caching. So all these cross-cutting concerns can be applied to any of the applications. So it can be separated from business logic. So these are the basic concerns which can be applied to your Bean, that is POJOS. The Spring AOP module provides interceptors to intercept an application. It is the same task. Interceptors are also cross-cutting concerns. And interceptors will be provided by the spring aop to do the same job it is termed as same it is a cross-cutting concern so if you see in this diagram you have many more examples like persistence security logging caching transactions everything can be applied to your business logic methods and this is all about aspect oriented programming cross-cutting concerns so this is the basic implementation of aspect oriented programming these are all the terms used in aspect oriented programming where aspect it is a module which has a set of apis providing cross-cutting requirements for example a logging module 
would be called AOP aspect for logging. An application can, can have any number of aspects depending on the application requirement. Then there is a joint cut. This represents a point in your application where you can plug in the aspect oriented programming aspects. So just know what we told about aspect like logging or transactions or security. So all these aspects can be plugged in into your application using these joint points. It is also the actual place in the application where an action will be taken using Spring AOP framework. Then there is an advice. This is the actual action to be taken either before or after the method execution. So this actual piece of code that is invoked during the program execution by the Spring AOP framework. And then there is a point cut. This is a set of one or more joint points. So where an advice should be executed. So you can specify the point cuts using expression or patterns as well as which we will see in AOP examples. And this method execution as you can see will be the business logic method which will have different joint points. As said, joint point will represent your application where the aspects are plugged in. So therefore, the advice is the code of your aspect which will be plugged in into your business logic method. And point cut is again a set of number of joints, joint points. The set of joint points is nothing but a point cut. So this is how the basic AOP programming works. So here is the basic representation using a method call. Before seeing the types of the op, uh, that is advisors, let's see what this figure says. The client calls a method. Consider it is a method ABC within a Dean object or a class. But proxy object intercepts the call. The core goal of a proxy is to intercept method invocation and where necessary execute chain of advisors that apply to a particular method. Spring's joint point model is built around method interception. So this means that Spring advice will be woven into an application at different points around a method's invocation. So since there are several points during the execution of a method, there are several advisors types. So this is how the intercepting methods will be applied to your actual beam. It can be before or after. So let's see the types of advisors which will be applied to your joints. That is nothing but program execution of method. So we have a before advice. This is used where before advice method is invoked. After advice, the advice functionality takes place after the advice method completes regardless of the outcome. No matter whatever is the outcome, the after advice will be only invoked after completing the actual business logic method. Then there is the after returning advice. This takes place after the advised method successfully completes. Around advice, the advice wraps the advice method providing some functionality before and after the advice method is invoked. So around it means before and after. So both advices are applied at once using this around advice. So when you use this around advice, the before advice is also invoked, after advice is also invoked. And something there is after throwing advice. So this advice functionality takes place after the advice method throws an exception. So whenever you have basic functionality to show, then you can write this advice which is after throwing whenever there is an exception thrown within your business logic method. 
एस्पेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग एस्पेक्ट जे सो एस्पेक्ट जे इज यूज फॉर एस्पेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग दिस अनोटेशन इट कैन बी एस्पेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग कैन आल्सो बी परफॉर्म यूजिंग एक्सएमएल कॉन्फ़िगरेशन फाइल यूजिंग द टैग एलिमेंट्स एओपी बट here we are seeing the annotation that is aspect j functionality using basic aspect j annotation so this refers to a style of declaring aspects as a regular java classes annotated the at aspect j support is enabled by including the following element inside your xml schema based configuration file so as i said earlier you can also include the aspect oriented programming into your application using this xml based element that is aop colon aspect j hyphen auto proxy within the xml if you don't want i mean you have to add this to your at aspect j annotation to work and within this you can also have many elements of xml elements if you want to configure using xml based configuration there is a declaring point cut which works along with your at aspect j annotation so based on at aspect j based configuration point cut declaration has two parts a point cut expression that determine exactly which method execution we are interested in so a point cut signature comprising a name and any number of parameters the actual body of the method is irrelevant and in fact should be empty so this is the basic syntax for using at point annotation you need to use execution keyword followed with the package and that star star will indicate any class with any method so this is the basic syntax of point cut Let's see the aspect oriented programming using annotation aspect. So we have already seen what are aspects, what are the methods used in aspect and what are point cuts. So to begin with aspect, there is a project created called aspect within which there is an xml configuration file as we have seen in the course this aop element needs to be added in your configuration files for aop to work and once it is done you also need to see the namespace of aop is added so these two are must to add or to use your aspect annotation so there is a logging method or a class so this name can be anything but since we are dealing with aspect oriented programming the name has been given as login because this aspect will be applied before and after your business method so here the aspect annotation is annotated to this class so create a normal class and annotate that with aspect that will give you the aspect programming within which it's very important you need to give a point cut point cut we have seen the syntax which takes execution and the package telling it will be applied to all classes within this package and all methods having any number of arguments this means that the syntax means that so if you want to apply for specific method and specific java class within this package you can also mention instead of star you need to replace with that class name and also this star should be replaced with method name so this is how point cut works once you have given a point cut so you can give on any simple method without any definition in it so just have a method with point cut on it and then apply that point cut using the before before annotation after annotation after throwing for exceptions and many more so these are some of the aspect advisors types of advisors what we saw which will be applied with this point cut saying that this aspects will be applied advisors will be applied for this package having all the classes and all the methods so there are only sysout statements 
which is telling it is going to set up some profile and then after annotation advice will tell you it will be given this that it has been set up so we have already seen the usage of these advices when it will be applied and also the after throwing advice annotation will be used when any exception is thrown so this is the class defining your aspect with different types of advices in order to apply this aspect there is a student class which has been used so this is the class which is there within the package so when we saw that point cut it will apply to this class because any class within this package that aspect will be applied by the spring container automatically so here since the student is there which will acting as a business class what it does it has just got property having getter and setter for it and also there is a method where we can throw explicitly to see how this at after throwing exception will work so this is the definition for your student class so let's see how it works you also need to add a main java class in order to invoke and get the bean instance so if you see there is a class part xml application context which has been used and it's taking beans.xml and once you have got the instance of bean with id of student you are going to use the method where we are setting the name jeff and getting the name using get me now what should happen if you see the xml definition you have already seen the this is the must there is just a bean definition for both the classes student as well as login so this is the aspect class which will be applied to your student class so let's see how it will work run the main java as java application and if you see this before advice as applied which has got this print statement and after advice has been updated uh, as been added or executed again before advice and we are setting the name after advice before advice and once the exception has been executed it has raised the exception because we are throwing explicitly illegal argument exception so whenever there is an exception thrown within the student class it has been shown here so that's why it is also printing exception has been raised this is the print statement if you remember it is there within your after throwing annotation within this method you can perform any business logic using this uh, exception that is this instance that this has been thrown and you can give appropriate message this is just to show a simple demonstration on how the aspect annotation along with point cut having different advisors will work on your bean that is spring bean class so this is the bean class and this has been used where the exception also has been taken care using at after throwing and this both the methods are getting executed before and after the advices are being applied after each execution of this method so if you see this the methods have been invoked so before this method getting invoked before advice is called and after this has been set after advice is called the same way when you invoke this method before advice is called after advice is called so finally when you are trying this it has raised an exception so this if you see the console you can understand how the advisors have been applied to your java class so this is the simple demonstration on aspect oriented programming spring mvc framework let's see spring mvc framework which is on model view controller architecture the spring web mvc framework provides model view controller architecture 
and ready components that can be used to develop flexible and loosely coupled web applications. The MVC pattern results in separating the different aspects of the application which is input logic, business logic and UI logic. So while providing a loose coupling between these elements. So there will be a loose coupling whenever you use MVC architecture. The Spring, Spring also supports web MVC framework. So having model, the model encapsulate the application data and in general they will consist of POJO. The view is responsible for rendering the model data and in general it generates HTML output that the client's browser can interpret. The controller is responsible for processing user request and building appropriate model and passes it to the view for rendering. So this is all about model view controller in Spring Web MVC framework. So this is the flow design for Web MVC framework. So here the Spring Web Model View Controller framework is designed around a dispatcher servlet that handles all the HTTP requests and responses. The request processing workflow of the Spring Web MVC dispatcher servlet is as shown in this diagram as you are seeing. So here the sequence of events which will happen when Incoming HTTP request will come to the dispatcher. Dispatcher servlet which is acting as a controller in Spring Web MVC framework. After receiving an HTTP request, dispatcher servlet consults the handler mapping to call the appropriate controller. So the controller takes the request and calls the appropriate service methods based on used get or POST method. The service method will set model data based on defined business logic and returns view name to the dispatcher servlet. So after which the dispatcher servlet will take help from view resolver to pick up the defined view for the request. Finally, the view is finalized. The dispatcher servlet passes the model data to the view which is finally rendered on the browser. These are the four steps followed by dispatcher servlet from beginning using handler mapping and then passing it to respective controller and using view resolver to get the appropriate view. Requirement configuration map request that you want the dispatcher servlet to handle by using a URL mapping in the web, web.xml file. So web.xml file is used for any web applications. So there you need to map dispatcher servlet as your servlet name and servlet class which acts as a controller. Upon initialization of dispatcher servlet, the framework will try to load the application context from a file named servlet icon servlet name icon servlet.xml. So if you are seeing this, there should be a file which dispatcher servlet will look for, starting with the name what you give as servlet name icon servlet.xml. So the servlet name can be anything given by user defined, whereas it has to be mandatory suffix with iPhone servlet.xml. So there should be iPhone servlet to your servlet configuration file located in web content web inf directory of your web application. So this is the re configuration requirement for any of the spring based MVC framework. Create your actual components. So the components used for creating MVC framework is controller, model and view. So defining a controller and then dispatcher servlet delegates the request to the controllers to execute the functionality specific to it. The add controller annotation indicates that a particular class serves the role of controller. The add request mapping 
Annotation is used to map a URL to either an entire class or a particular handler method. So, art request mapping can be applied for specifying your URL pattern either to a class or a method. So, let's see demo on print web application. Let's see the demonstration of Spring MVC framework using web application. So I have created a dynamic web project which will be used for web application. And this is the structure when you create dynamic web project. And once you have a source folder within which the package is present and all the files related to this MVC framework where we are developing web application using Spring MVC. There are two files. Let me show you. There is a student POJO which is a simple POJO file having name and age as properties. So it has got respective setters and getters method. And there is another class that is POJO which is acting as a controller for MVC application. So we have already seen controller will make the class to act as a controller to direct the path for HTTP request. So this is the class using annotation of controller and the methods used are student which will return model and view, which is used where the student is the view and command is the object which has got student. This is the object of student class and currently it will be null, it will be blank and this command is always required when you use the object. So, and then you have new instance of student created for model and view and there is another method add student so here if you see the value of request mapping this request mapping annotation is used to map the url so here there is a value for url as add student and then http we have a request method called post where it is doing a job of posting the values from the form that is JSP page. So user has entered name and age values. So using the request method post, it will be submitted. So this is how you define the methods with respect to request mapping. So request mapping can also be given at class level. We have already seen. So it gives for entire class the same URI. But here, we have two methods with different URLs. So therefore, using student, there will be a page coming up which will be blank. Hence, the student instance will be blank. Just with new student, you have just created a new student. The student class, we have already seen it has got two properties, name and age. So, the page which comes up using this URL will pop up two fields having blank. So this object will hold whatever you enter the values. So once you use another value method, add student, using this post method, it will submit the details, what you have added, and add it to model, which is nothing but instance of model map. So this will add all your values, what you have entered in the JSP page. Finally, you will return the string result. So this is how you define controller class annotated with controller for MVC application. Once this is done, this is a spring beam which is acting as a controller. You have two Java files. One is just a plain Pojo having properties and another class acting as a controller. So there are two annotations used, at controller and at requesting. So controller is the main entry of your MVC framework 
which will handle the request coming from dispatch filter which will select appropriate controller so for that in web content of dynamic project you do have web.xml here is the place where you define the dispatcher sublet which will be directing your http request and http responses so it is from our spring framework dot web dot sublet so once you have this controller you can give a name any name as you want it can be user defined and the same sublet name should be mapped with url pattern here the url pattern is slash that is backslash so once you have defined with web dot xml with servlet name and servlet mapping next is for mvc framework as said earlier you need to add eiffel servlet dot xml so this will be the servlet name mvc web servlet name suffixed with eiffel servlet dot xml because after loading this the dispatcher servlet will look up this file servlet file to find the package where it can find the annotation defined spring beans and then divert the controller so here if you see there is a context name space used where you have to include this and this will give you a com component scan so what will this do is it will activate the scanning in your respective base package to get all the spring classes annotations and then act on it it will also activate the annotation used that is controller and request mapping once you are done with that you need to give the bean class internal resource view resolver so this view resolver as we saw in a flow of mvc the view resolver is used to resolve the view you need to direct the flow to the respective jsp page or html page here we are using jsp page so for that you need to select respective view resolver here currently the view resolver which is nothing but internal resource view resolver is coming from spring framework web dot servlet dot view and this is used here to resolve the views so here if you see there is a prefix inside web inf there is a folder created jsp within which i have placed all the jsp files so once you have done defining this the next thing is the lib folder inside this lib folder you need to see that all the jar files which you have added in the build path the spring library jar files what you have downloaded from the source spring spring source dot org site you have to copy paste the files which are required to spring framework specially for web application so once you have done you also need to get this spring iphon web dot jar for web application this is also very much required so you need to get all the jar files that is libraries of spring and be pasted inside the lib folder which is there within web iphone inf this is there inside web content of dynamic web project so once you are done with this you can set the same the build path inside your java build path all the jar files and after which you can execute the program so there are two jsp files so here there is a jsp folder been created to separate out the jsps so you can give the folder name as anything but since you have given the suffix as web inf jsp you have to follow the same so it depends on the organizing the folder structure as you organize accordingly so here i have organized to separate the jsp page and here there is a student dot jsp page which is having two fields it has got two fields name and age 
and there is a submit button to take the values entered and here if you see there is a form action used which is having method post and action coming from MVC web app student this is the path which has been given to the request mapping so once the JSPs are done there is a result JSP to display the result it is also having two fields with name and age and these are all the values which will get replaced and shown the values and these are all the tags coming from the string framework tags form so these are the tags of spring framework so you can see more in detail there are many tags available for developing JSP pages once these two JSP pages are in place and these two XML files which are very much required for spring MVC web application you can now deploy this on the server right click run on server and then finish so here you need to give as mvc web student if you remember in controller there was url value given as student so even in this browser you need to give as a student so once you're done with the URL, it will map with the JSP page, MVC web, and also the request mapping slash student. You can give the name. So this is the basic JSP page used for showing MVC web application. Did you see once you click submit the data has been shown in a result page and result page if you see it is directing to add student request mapping method. If you remember the add student URI has taken you to add student method within which it is added adding all the values for these attributes and the same attributes are used in result page to show this values so this is how the model map which holds the values entered in the form page can be used in showing up in JSP and the request mapping using value as URL as well as method based on the method post and also this based on the method get MVC web application can be developed and this was the demonstration of Spring MVC web application. So let's see the demonstration on start integration with Spring. So before that, these are the jar files which are required for this demo. For any kind of struct integration with Spring, you need the jar files from Spring libraries which you download using springsource.org. Along with that, you also require the jars which are shown in here like servlet api spring web jar struts to spring plugin this is very important because it is integration with struts 2 and spring so you are plugging in strut 2 with the spring framework and also struts to core and these are the jars which are required apart from spring jars let's see the demonstration on struts integration with spring framework here struts 2 is used with spring framework for that there is the dynamic web project which i've created named as struct integrated with spring so struct icon spring is a project name and this is the basic structure of web application which will be the dynamic web project and here within the source folder there is one photo hello world which is just having a property message respective 
data transmitter to it and if you see this this is the strut to action class it is said action class by seeing the signature of execute method so execute method is present within this java class it is a struct java class which is nothing but a pojo so once you have an action class defined next step is within this web inf folder you need to add all the jars related to your spring as well as the struct jar files you need to add the respective and required struct jars not everything which will be avoided you should avoid to see unnecessary exceptions and get only the required jars so here you can see all the spring library jars which are used and apart from this there are struct jars as well and here since we are doing struct with spring integration you need to add struct spring login dot jar this is important to run your structs and spring application so this is how the plugin happens and you can easily plug in the struct framework using spring so this is the must jar file and also the required other struct jar file can also be got but it should be the limited jar file based on the requirement getting all the jar file of struct can sometimes get into exception whereas spring you can get all the jar files downloaded from springsource.org and once you have put the jar files inside this lib folder which is there inside web inf and web content after that there is a web.xml so within this this is the basic web.xml definition for structs too where the filter here is used as a controller the filter here is struts prepare and execute filter and this filter definition is must struts to will take this filter as a front end controller and this is where it handles receiving the request and respective for spring framework in order to plug in with you need to have context loader listener so this is from spring framework dot web dot context and this is the must for spring to listen and inject the beans and this is how you are integrating structs with spring and once you have done urls defined for your filter structs to the listener also need to be given for context loader listener coming from spring framework which is there inside web dot xml the another file application context dot xml this is the file required by spring framework if you see here in this you just have this spring element template being included within which we have bean stack and here bean element is having an id which we have created hello world inside this package and if you see this id that is bean id definition is the xml configuration for spring so here where you are defining your or injecting your hello world java bean so here within the property element we are passing the value for this property because there is only one property inside the hello world class if you remember this is the action class which is having only one property and then you are initializing that with property element with the value hello world from struct spring integration so this is where spring is used in structs with this application context dot xml configuration file which is required by the spring container and once you have this the next thing is creating the jsp page 
there is only one JSP page which is just showing that message of what has been set using property element within the beam tag what we saw inside this application context. So here if you see this is the message which has been initialized. So the injection of the hello world beam class is done using application context.xml by defining the beam element and then using the web.xml context loader listener. So once this is done, you can run the application on deploying onto the Tomcat server. So right click, run as, run on server, deploy it, the project into the server. So it is asking for the path. The path will be welcome.jsp. No, it will be hello world because from there it will return the execute method. And here in hello world. welcome.jsp, you are seeing this. So if you see this, there is another configuration file which I have to show you for structs. So this is where you are mapping here. So structs.xml which is required to be placed inside the classes folder which is within WebINF. And here if you see the class which is referring hello world class. It is, it is coming from application context file. If you see this, the ID, the ID has been referred inside structs.xml. So here it is injecting this instance within this action and here whenever there is a success return from execute method, you are showing the welcome.jsp. So this is one one more configuration file which is required by struts. Therefore, you have to have a package name element within which action specifying the name of your action and then class which is the bean ID in your application context.xml. And here the spring is injecting this bean on runtime providing the property element value as this. And we have seen the output. So when you run this, start spring hello world, then hello world has got an execute method. So here it will return the success. And once it is returning the success, in struts.xml you are mapping success with welcome.jsp. And that welcome.jsp will be shown in this browser. And here it has been executed with hello world from strut spring integration. And this is how you can integrate strut with spring by using the injection or dependency injection or inversion of control concept within your strut framework. And this was the demonstration of strut integration with spring. So let's see the demonstration on Ibernate integration with Spring. So before that, these are the jar files which are required for any kind of Ibernate integration with Spring application. So you need to have all the Spring jars downloaded from www.springsource.org which we have already seen in earlier slides. Along with that jar files, you also need the OJDBC if your database is Oracle then you have commons dbcp jar file commons pool then jta that is java transaction api sources j2e commons collection java assist.jar commons login then ibernate jar files like ibernate3.jar ibernate validator ibernate validator annotations 
let's see the demonstration on Ibernate integration with Spring. So before seeing the demo, the required jar files, you have to get all the Spring jar files within the build path as well you also need to get all the ibernate related jar files like ibernate 3.jar validator validator annotation and also there is a jar called ibernate annotation if you use annotation within your ibernate classes and then you also need to get ojdbc 6.jar which will be in any of the uh, database specially required for database connection here it is oracle so this jar file is required for oracle database further there is commons database dbcp which is also required for data source connectivity and there is commons pool and G jta that is for java transaction then j2w.jar Commons collections.jar and Java assist.jar. So these jar files are must required for this application. What we are seeing the demo now. Integration of Ibernate with Spring. So here in source folder, it's a Java project. So there is a simple Java project. There is a source folder within which there are two XML files which are required for this demonstration. So application context is where you are in using the spring injection as well as the uh, integration of your Ibernate mapping XML. And this application context is required for your spring container to look for. And then there is an employee Ibernate mapping XML which is used for Ibernate to Look on the table which you are trying to use in this application. So, this dot hpm it means Ibernate mapping dot xml file required by Ibernate and application context file is used for Spring. So, these two configuration files are required, and then there are classes here. There is one single POJU called employee which is having three properties ID, name and salary. And this employee class will represent the table in your database. So there should be a table existing with these three identical properties. So there are three properties ID, name and salary with respective data types. So we have to create a table accordingly in the database so there is a table created in sql developer so we can just see the columns in it so empl is the table which has got these three properties id name and salary so this should match with the employee class which we have created so there are three properties accordingly there are three columns in that table and once it is done there is another class used for ibernate where it uses ibernate template so this will act as an helper class for querying retrieving or any kind of operations done for your database so here if you see the instance of Ibernate template is used for performing save operation which will insert the data into your table which we saw just now. So this instance is required by the Ibernate to perform any kind of operations. So this is the Ibernate class and then finally there is main Java through which we use the spring line of code which uses application context.xml to get the instance of the bean that is employee DAO, which where we just created 
the ibernate template instance so initially the application context xml file will be used and read within which if you see these beans tag you can find in any of the spring xml configuration files and here there are many namespaces which have been defined we have already seen all these and these are the template which are required to use the respective namespace so it should be defined within this configuration file along with that there is a bean id for data source so this data source is coming from basic data source from which you have to give the data source name for your database so this is the data source definition for the database oracle and this is the driver class which is oracle.jdbc.driver.oracle driver and it is the value for the property driver class name and for the url it is jdbc oracle pin at localhost 1521 is a port and orcl is the database which is used which i am going to use in this demo and finally username password so this is the complete definition for the data source or database what you are using for ibernate demonstration and finally there is a bean id here where we have just seen employee dump so here for this bean id there is a property session factory so if you see this class again so this is nothing but the property and here the name of that is session factory where it is referring the class so if you see this class is that it has been defined here so this is location session factory bean so this is the factory bean which is used to create the bean instance locally required by spring and moreover it acts as a session factory instance for ibernate template so these are the configuration details of ibernate and then there is the mapping resource and data source which has been defined at the top so this local session factory bean will require these two properties for setting up the lookup for your database and connection for your database and also to know the respective table for what you want to access within the application you need to give the hbm file that is ibernate mapping.xml so here in this case it is employee.hbm.xml so this is how the lookup is done by spring container using application context.xml so once this is done next configuration file will be read as employee.hbm.xml so we can see that and this is the file here it just has ibernate mapping tag with the location of the employee class having three properties so as i said it should match with your table and the table here is emcl id is the assign which tells it's a generator which will be nothing but another column which generates the primary key kind of id 1 2 3 it just increments the number and it is done automatically when you give this tag and next the properties are name that is id one more is salary id name and salary these three are the properties within your employee that is empl table so this is the definition which should be given in your hbm.xml configuration file so these two are the configuration files which are required in spring and ibernate integration so finally when this is done you can just invoke and run this main java class so before that you can also see this there is a same method here since it is safe what's happening here is when we execute this class it will invoke save and insert the values into your table so you can even use other update create there are other operations provided by ibernate 
using the cybernet template but currently for this demo we can see the inflation happening for your table so let's execute this main java so here if you see we are getting the instance of the bean id which is nothing but employed DAO, and this definition has been defined in application context on xml so you can also define using application context class part xml con application context or using class part users so either way you can get the instance of your bean so once you are having the instance of your bean you can also set the values what you want to insert into your database since we are using the same operation of hibernate template you can set the values for employee object and call save employee which in turn call save on the hibernate template instance so if you see this is the method which has been invoked in main java so this in turn will call the save operation so when this will get executed you can see the insertion being happening in the backend currently there are no data in this table so when we are running this there is no data so we executed this table but there is no data but once we execute the java program we can find the data in it so let's ex execute this select this main java run as java application so here if you see in the console the save operation has created this statement implicitly using hibernate so it is an hibernate method which will generate this sql that is structured query language query insert into empl table name salary and id the values will be what have been set using this main java we have set 114 jeff and salary so these value would have been inserted using this save operation so we can again go and check the database so let's execute this query again did you see this there is an id 114 jeff and salary being inserted through the java application that is the spring and hibernate integration demo what we have just seen it has connected to the database using dot hbm mapping file and spring integration so this is how the spring is integrated with hibernate so main thing we do injection of the beans using the bean tag elements and provide the instance on runtime and also the other properties are used like data source and session factories for creating the beans with hibernate injection so all these are the usefulness of spring with hibernate and the configuration files required are application context and employee dot hbm that is hibernate mapping configuration files so this is how it has established a connection with the database and got the result and this is the demo for hibernate and spring integration